the worst one. Let's just say I have the worst one. Why are you here? Really don't know. Find one of the other good ones, you bitch. Come off on my fucking Instagram. This Why are you here? Who invited you? Who called you? Every day they come here. I don't like what you're saying. I don't like. Then why are you here? I am going to say the same shit tomorrow, so don't come back. Right? Just go. Who is holding you hostage? Yeah, I don't get it. I don't get it. And I'm a minority too, you know. So first of all, among artists, I'm a minority. Among humans on the planet, I am a minority. My ideas are not really in... They're not aligned with the mainstream. So I am one of few. You have to search to find me. Because I am one of few. There are literally almost 8 billion people on the planet. And you find me. Right. And you think it's so important that I need to know that you don't like me. Like, bitch, I don't give a fuck. Right. How many times do I have to tell you that I don't give a flying fuck? I don't give two rat tail combs, bitch. Bye. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> And I'm and they act like I'm supposed to be affected. Right. Like That's the part. Like I should be hurt that they're going. Like I literally don't know you. Your name is Squillibop five four three. I don't know you. Right. Like you're supposed to lose sleep. Girl bye. Right. Bye. Jesus. And these then, people and, 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 oh, these people are insecure and they and they feel like they could get a rise out of you. Cause you're you know when you're vocal and you know you speak what they think that they're gonna get a rise out of you. So they just come with them chatty chatty, like nobody wants to hear that. Bye. Bye. Child, sometimes I sometimes I'm idle. For the most part, I understand what's going on with them psychologically. I do. And many of them end up in my DMs apologizing. Really? You'd be surprised. <laughs> You'd be surprised. <laughs> um and I, I'm not going to shade them on no on uh, in public. If when they when they come inside and they speak gently and they and they sometimes they apologize and they say what's going on with them and, and I end up understanding. And empathizing, yeah. Because I, I really am not. I'm, I'm a softy. I am. I really am. You know this because you are too. Exactly. But, but I am a softy with a hard crust. Yeah. yeah. I am crusty as hell on the outside. So if you run and hit up, smack up in me, you're going to hit into stone. Yeah. Now, if you if you come gently and speak to me, I may let that stone down, and you'll see the soft insides. But you're not running up into soft. You're running up into a wall, and this wall is armed. It's spikes and everything waiting for you. It's cannons and all kinds of artillery. So don't come for me. Right. Because I'm in my corner. You know, I'm one of the least, I'm one of the least promoted artists. I don't try very hard. I just come on. You see me think, I just come on. I state my opinion. I ask for information. People have taught me so much, by the way. I, I, I'm not a dictator. Obviously, my wall is not a democracy. It's my wall. Right. But I'm not a dictator. So people have given me information which has changed my perspective. And when I am schooled, I accept it. I am a student. I'm a forever student. I'm a child of the universe, a student of the universe and all its components, which include the humans as lowly as they are. <laughs> but you don't come barging your way into my space and being boisterous and be rude and expect me to accept that. And when I say, yeah, listen, go love a juice yourself, then they tell me that I'm rude. The part that I don't understand is that why aren't people allowed to have their own opinions? As soon as you don't agree with the masses, as soon as you don't agree, it's a problem. You're this and you're that. Why can't people just have their opinion? You have your opinion. I have, a, I have my opinion. We respect each other and we just carry on. Why do people want to attack you when you have your own opinion? That's what I want to know. I, I've been trying to figure that out for years. I don't understand. It's across all three. I'm on three platforms. I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, and I'm on Twitter. Twitter is a whole different case because Twitter is like it belongs to the JLP now in the Jamaica. Jamaica Labour Party owns Jamaica and Twitter. So as you open your mouth and say something that is slightly even in, in slight disagreement with the Prime Minister, there's a million people over there. I think after, after cursing them out and, and disrespecting them, after a while, they just left me alone. <laughs> and I like that. Like, just leave me the hell alone. Right, right. I like that. But I, I don't know what it is. It's not that they think people shouldn't have an opinion. Because, Shannon, they have opinions all day, every day. Right. Right. <laughs> they just think they alone should have opinions. That's the catch-22, right. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. So if you could tell Mr. Prime Minister one thing, just one thing, what would you tell him? Right now, what would you tell him? 
right now yeah. at this point honestly i don't even know i don't even want, i don't want to tell him anything at this point i just want him to go mm. i'm waiting for a good viable option <laughs> and if we, to be honest with you if the opposition could get itself together and they put a cardboard box if they put a styrofoam plate to run i'm voting for it if they put toenail clippings i'm voting for it anything except this arrogant arrogant and an incredibly ignorant man and this is not about politics i'm not i'm not anything you know i grew up in a i grew up in a jlp household my mother was a jlp activist but i am a jamaican first i am human right and geographically i'm jamaican and then by virtue of my being a child of the universe, I belong to everywhere. I have opinions on every place. So, by the way, people, stop asking me where I live. I have opinions on Florida, Georgia, New York. I have opinions on Europe. I have opinions on Africa, the whole continent. I have opinions on the entire Caribbean and all of the diaspora. Stop telling me I don't live there. I don't care what you think. I have an opinion and you don't live on my Instagram page. So if you're here talking, it means I could speak on another country because I don't live there and you don't live here. Right. <laughs> that part. Jesus. <laughs> so now, okay, so I saw... I feel. Craig! <laughs> I, have a, I saw a live yet, uh, today. Who was this? This this? I this think they're actually in here. No, 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 no. Young Ooh. Vibes TV? I think that was... Did it? Maybe, I don't know. Well, I was on YouTube today and... Uh, the host or whatever put your live that you talked about with, you know, Fluffy, Fluffy Miss Kitty yeah. and, and the Prime Minister and stuff like that. And I, well, it was, I wasn't actually talking about her specifically. I was just talking about everybody who speaks like that. But they put that in the, you know how they do, do clickbait or whatever and, and they just put stuff so you can watch it or whatever. But I was going through the comments and I picked out two comments that I want to read to you and I want you to address. So yeah. one person said, you have no rights when it's a public health emergency. Let's see how you perform abroad without being vaccinated. You are dangerous to be using your platform to dissuade people from taking the vaccine. What do you say to that? All right, first of all, it really amuses me when people speak on me so categorically and they don't know me at all. They don't know anything about me. They don't know my resolve. They don't know anything about my personality. They just hear some songs and they string together a character in their minds and then they put that on us and expect us to wear it. First of all, I'm not anti-vax. I have never dissuaded anyone from getting the vaccine. I am anti-vaccine mandate. I am an anti-mandate. If you want to get it, get it. I'm not telling anybody not to get it. The basis on which they're mandating the vaccine, some of it is not true. Some of it is simply not true. Now, my problem is, is not simply about the vaccines. It's about people's health. Now, if you get the vaccine and you get COVID anyway, don't you want to get better? Why are they not pushing treatment options? Right. Why are they criminalizing and, and ostracizing people for pushing treatment options? Why are they censoring? You know how many things I've posted and had removed? I've had things removed which were factual. Now, if a doctor has treated thousands of patients and all of them got better, not, none died, none got hosp hospitalized, how are we censoring that information? Right. This is empirical data. This is lived experience. This is a doctor who actually treated living, breathing human beings and none of them went to hospital. Now, who are we following? Who are we listening to? The doctors who say, we're seeing people die. Now, dude, do I want to take advice from the doctor who's seeing people die or the one who makes them live? It's common sense rule my thing, right? So, to the persons asking, because, because that question is coming from all angles. It's coming at me from all angles. Okay in various ways and all of them sound stupid to me but <laughs> let me indulge them people pick what they want to hear what what parts they want to hear and 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 when they don't hear what they want to hear they right. 
Because I have never said do not take the vaccine. When have I ever said that? Let me quickly let me let, let, let me not really divert, but let me touch on a point. Last year, early last year when the pandemic, when they just pronounced it a pandemic, um, I was approached by one of my agents on behalf of a, a, a local media house. And they asked me to do a PSA, a, a recording for a PSA to get people to stay home. And I was cool with the message as, at first, stay home. But I was not cool with the method. Like, we can't simply look at people and say, stay home. We have to look at their circumstance, and then we have to prepare for lockdown. Now, there are people locking down, and I know this for a fact because this is my upbringing. This is where I'm from. I grew up in a one room. There was a, a few years of my life, we lived in one room, and I don't mean studio flat. I don't mean fancy, man, an expensive apartment. I mean one room in a smutty house. Right. Right? And if you'd said lockdown then, I don't know what would have become of me. Because we only went in there in the night time to sleep. Yeah. There was not enough room to lock down in that room. So I was saying, in my recording, that I still have the entire recording, by the way, that I sent to the media house and they chopped it. So I said, we want to stay inside and allow this thing to pass. Right? To protect each, ourselves and each other. But if you don't have the resources with which to stay inside, reach out to others and people... If you have more than you need, look around you for people who don't have enough because we need to make sure everybody can lock down. They cut it out. A lie. They cut it out and they just had me saying, go stay home. So listen to this now. Then when I start saying, but this is foolishness, you can't do this, then people came back at me and they were like, but you're a hypocrite because you were just telling people to lock down. I can't even curse them because they're right. It seems like I said that, but RGR, communication group, Cut the fucking video. Wait, time. Cut the video. Can you sue somebody for that? But why bother? True. Why bother? But when I when I did a video and I said, if I don't have a home, if I don't have a cupboard, if I don't have a fridge, I was on my live. And I said, if I have no food, I have no resources, I have no creature comforts, and you tell me to stay home, I am going to say, go suck your mother. They cut that. One of these so-called internet bloggers cut that and started it as a right at the point where I said, go suck your mother and label it that I was saying it to the prime minister. Now, if I want to tell him to suck his mother, I am not afraid to tell him. I wouldn't tell my Instagram. I wouldn't tell my Instagram. I would tell him. So I came on and I was speaking hypothetically about a situation. And, and there are many people on the live. And at that time, I didn't save it. I was really new to lives yeah. and I hadn't saved it. Um, as well as I wouldn't have brought a lawsuit to that blogger because I would have given him more credence. I would have, True. I would have busted him. Right. See, most of the people who know me don't know these people who are berating me. And when I file a lawsuit against them, I actually add validation to them. So I wouldn't do that. But it is irresponsible. Besides the fact that they're not real journalists and I don't expect that from them, but it, as humans, they're irresponsible because they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. What I'm saying is, which is what Damien Crawford from the PNP was saying last year. Let's give people the resources with which to lock down. You can't just lock them down there if people are poor. A man who hustled today for tonight's dinner can't lock down for a week. At all. Cannot. At all. Can't. He's, he just cannot. And then, Shannon, let me tell you what people take for granted. You see, creature comforts, this is what preserves our sanity. And our sanity is what keeps us going. You think food alone can bring you? Food alone can bring your child. Not at all. If you have food and water and you have no sanity, what's the point? Right, right. This is what keeps you from jumping. Right. From throwing up that rope. From turning that gun to your head. The, the, the balance that you have to strike psychologically is what they've disrupted. And it's, some of it is lost and will never come back. Right. And we keep dismissing the importance of people... There are some people who live uptown in mansions with their AC on, watching Netflix, watching Disney Plus, watching all these things with a fridge full of food and cupboard full of food and a chef or a cook or a helper making that food because they're, they're freaking handicapped. They can't help themselves and they depend on the working class, the masses to help them. Yeah. And they're sitting in front of their helper saying, why them can't just stand on them yard yeah. while the helper is not at her yard? She's locked down in your yard with her kids at home, waiting for the little money that you eke out to her. We are apathetic and I hate us. 
I hate us. And this is what I've been saying since last year. And none of it is changed. It's, it's the same thing I'm saying this year. And Andrew yeah. Holness could never get my boot again. If I vote for that man, I chop off my hand, you know. And anybody who votes for him is irresponsible. Right. He's an arrogant tyrant. Is there anybody else speaking out against him like you? A whole heap of people. Okay. A whole heap of people. First of all, girl, he won the election in a landslide because there is wide-scale voter apathy. People didn't come out. It was about 30% of the voting of the electorate that came out. 30 and 40% of the electorate and he got the majority of the minority mm -hmm. i wouldn't be so arrogant and cocky if i was him mm -hmm. i would not be he got the majority of the minority he's really not elected by the people he's elected by the fringe by the tribalists mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and at the moment the 60 percent decides to get up and say enough all of them are gone yeah yeah the 60 percent can't be bothered with them the 60 percent are nauseated by them so to be so arrogant, I don't understand the basis on which they stand to be so freaking cocky. I can't. I, this is the whole ordeal. It's a lot. It is a <laughs> lot to digest. I can't front. I was one of those people that was, I was anti-vax, anti-vaccination. I was, I'm not taking that. I don't know what's in it. I don't know. But I, at, the, at the time when the pandemic broke out, I was staying with my 93-year-old grandmother in the house with my 93 year old grandmother and my 62 year old mother. So I'm like, look, I got a decision because I would never want, because I'd be out and about, you know, I would never want yeah. to bring my, my 93 year old grandmother back anything. So when I saw my 93 year old, and I'm saying 93 over and over because that is, that, that, that makes up for something. It's big. But when I see my 93 year old grandmother take the vaccine and is okay, even though I know that God forbid if something were to happen, we won't see that until years out. But when I see my grandmother take it, I'm like, I don't think I have much of a choice at this point because I think my mother's gonna tell me to get the hell up out of her house if I don't take this damn vaccine. My mother kind of twisted my arm. She was like, all I want for my birthday is for you to take the vaccine. I'm like, oh God. <laughs> That's how you go. <laughs> that is fucked <laughs> up. <laughs> so, you know, so I ended up taking it, but I was for real anti vaccination. I really was because I'm like, we don't really know. And, and clearly, this shit don't work. All right. Can I just, can I just make a small tweak to that? Please. Say, say, say anti this mRNA vaccination. I'm not even, or whatever this is. I was. <laughs> Because you're not, I don't think you've ever been anti-vax. <coughs> because did you have a problem with all the other vaccinations? Did you have a problem with any of the other vaccinations? Actually, you can't, you can't get me to take no flu shot neither. My mother always tried to, no, no. No, but the flu shot, all right, so, so the flu shot and the coronavirus shots, are, I, I would say they're in the same category, but they're not exactly, um, they're not exactly the same. Um, as far as the makeup of them, or as far as the engineering of them. I'm not a scientist, as people rush to tell me every day. I've never pretended to be. I have no interest. But these two are not the same. However, to, as far as I'm concerned, they're both not extremely necessary. I, I have never taken a flu shot. I've never. Yeah, I haven't taken um, in decades. I, I, I don't see the need. Yeah, me neither. Um, the corona shots... I don't feel the need to take them, but I have no problem with anybody else who wants to take them. That's the thing. This is the, the, the one thing that people keep missing. To say, I have the right to refuse this thing is not to be anti the thing. Today I asked on my Facebook, if I took 20, 21 penises. Not 16? <laughs> if I took 21 penises, and then the 22nd penis came and I was like, uh... I'm going to pass on this one. I, I'm seeing a little crust here. There are some warts around it. I, yeah, I'm going to pass. I'm going to pass, sir. Have you taken a shower lately? I'm going to pass. I'm going to pass. I'm not anti-penis. I'm anti-that guy. I'm anti-that guy. And when the 23rd comes along and he's clean and fresh and he has a really nice penis, I'm probably going to get back on. Hmm? No, I'm telling him to throw up some eggplant emojis. 
I, I get what you're saying. But that's not like I, I don't become suddenly I'm anti-vax. When the hell did I become anti-vax? When have we had a vaccine conversation prior to this? Never. How am I anti-vax? I'm not anti-vax. I'm pro-choice. True. I'm pro-choice, I and I have the right choice of words. Then they're and they're killing me with this anti-vax thing, and I'm looking at them like, this is ridiculous. Are you get some people that I know are supposed to be smarter? Yeah. So, we, but you know what? This is this is really defining education for me. Education is about memory. You go to school, you go to college, they throw out these things and you memorize them and you put them back on the paper and preferably just the way you got them. So you just regurgitate. Right. And now you have a degree. Right. It doesn't mean you're smart at all. It means you have good memory, child. Hennessy can fuck that up. Yep. <laughs> right about that. But when I know, I know. I go for understanding and I go for critical thinking skills. I'm, I, I'm not anti-education. In fact, my entire career I've spent begging kids to go to school. <laughs> because education is the quickest, easiest, most affordable or most accessible legal way out of poverty. Yeah. And I, I, I push education. I paid way more school fees than I can even remember whose school fees I paid. Random people. Yeah. I've, I've bought books, random people's book lists. If I feel like it was a legitimate um, request and I can see that this is a good person, they just, they're just down on their look. I've been down on my look. I have filled many book list requests. And I don't put these things on my resume and I don't take pictures of people in their times of need. I do not need that kind of promotion. You know how bad me is as a, as a writer? Mm. Write wicked lyrics. I'm going to deliver a bad song. I'm going to put out album, back-to-back -back album where, where iconic. Me no need forget no promotion for poor people. Yeah. And I've been poor and I know what it feels like. Shannon, when we lick a bit and we're hungry, you think we could have accept food from next door? My mother, my mother raised me from pride. I could not accept food from next door. And for the sole reason that we would be ridiculed, we would be shamed for being poor. And this is what I've taken with me into my adulthood. And into whatever success I've enjoyed, if I give somebody something, it's not going to come up on my resume. And I'm not claiming it from taxes either. Right. Because claiming it from taxes means I didn't give it. It means all the taxpayers did. Right. I didn't give it. That's why I don't do foundations and stuff like that, you know, because this is other people giving and me taking the props. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe in that. What I give, I give from myself, whatever I can. I used to set a budget monthly for... I just look out for people who have real causes, like a child who's going to school, who can pay, finish paying the school fee, who has a little bit of school fee to pay. I pay it. It saves her having to take her body. But the men would rather those girls come to them for the money so they can slide body with the money. Um, you know, this is how we are. You know, we're pred we have a predatory society. You know, this human race yeah. is horrible. Oh. Yes, we it's horrible. Only getting worse. Jesus Christ. They don't give you anything unless they have something immediately to gain from it. You know, get nothing for nothing, you know. <laughs> nothing for nothing, you know, is a for run. And boy, these young girls know a run and the young boys too. I feel so sorry for them. Yep. And old people are horrible. Yep. As I get older, I really dis I'm disgusted by old people. It's not just the old it's not just the young people. It's the old people too. <laughs> no, it's mostly the old people. Old people are horrible. Yo. <laughs> Jesus Christ, they withhold everything. The old man with the body, like, sir, when you open your mouth, there's a string stretching from the top lip to the bottom. You're old. <laughs> You're turning into a fish. Their mouth is raw and they want to put stick their tongue into Like, sir. <laughs> sir. And, and, and these girls who, who have sugar daddies, I have so much respect and, and love for them. Like, girl, you are a hero. You're a hero. Not to, not to. You mean. You make that the fish they touch you, you make a lizard they touch you. Like when they get old, they're turning into other animals, you know. We we shouldn't and we're dissing these girls. Don't diss them. Feel sorry for them. Like they have no option. Listen. They literally some of them have no option, really. Like think about a rural Jamaican girl. And, and sugar Shirura. Sugar daddy life is not easy. I tried it one time in my life. I ain't even gonna lie to y'all. I tried that shit one time. And I got flewed out twice, and I'm like, no, I'm, I can't do this no more. I got my rent no. for three months without having to give no sugar. But when he start asking for sugar and start talking to me crazy, I'm like, no, sir. Mm -mm. 
Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm. I'm moving back in with my mom. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Oh God. Listen. That's not an easy life. The body, the, so, the, the body that just refuses to stand up, like sir. <laughs> just let me be a friend and lie down and read to you. Now you know your eyesight of feel. Let me read to you. I have this complete Edgar Allan Poe. I can read these stories from Poe. <laughs> Either the older sugar daddy, if that was the case. He was young. That was the problem. He was only. A he wanted sugar for real. Huh? <laughs> he, he wanted sugar for real. Uh, that is that's a whole uh, conversation listen you know what some of us speak from places of privilege and i really hate it because when women say oh girls do that girls do that that's because girlfriend you have a different life you have a different life when a young girl leaves college or, or when she's going to college she's up setting off on a path of debt She's going to indebt herself without any guarantees to get a job to pay back that debt. She leaves college. She has this use, useless degree because her parents have the old-fashioned ideas of what is success engraved in their minds. And they want you to become a doctor and a lawyer. And there are so many doctors and lawyers right. that only very few of them actually make money. Right. Um, and, and they bypass all the skills. And, and be, by the time they, they finish college and have this degree, this useless degree, this, these obsolete degrees that they can't. Right now, you better have to go to the supermarket and buy a degree deodorant than get one of them damn degrees. Okay, you can't get a job from that. At least you'll smell good with a degree from the, the, the um, supermarket. But they come out with these useless degrees and they can't get a job. And when they do get a job, the job is not really hinged on their degree. At all. The job is hinged on them being willing to take the body of the man who gives them the job. So the young boys and girls are being preyed on because their parents set them up for that. And their parents, God bless their hearts, they didn't mean any harm. They didn't know they were doing that. But they, they created, a, a, they, it's like we have a production line of fodder for the predators. Yes. yes. And they come out, they come, there's one, Jamaica has one famous predator who I met when I was a teenager. I met when I was a teenager. And in, I, yeah. But he's famous. Like, everybody knows he's a predator. And they speak about him behind his back. And, and then when I, when I talk about him, people say, so why don't you report him? I'm like, to whom? I've been in his presence in political circles. The, the, the high-ranking police officers were there and high-ranking pol politicians were there. And they were his friends. Who do I tell on this guy? Who do I tell? Who the fuck do I tell? You know, we speak off at the tops of our heads. We speak out our asses. And we say all these fantastic sounding things like we're really about our business. And we mean, it, you know, and you're talking a lot, but you're doing nothing like, girl, I'm doing everything I can. I'm doing everything I can. Yeah. That's I make myself available to the victims, facilitate, try to help them to get to the place where they can press charges. We can't. I try everything. I try everything fucking thing that that's the but we have a society that accommodates them the only thing you can do at that point is leave that to god because like what else do you hear you feel powerless well i'm never gonna stop trying because i know that the one is out there listen jamaica is a strange place you know jamaica pretends to be the most religious place on the earth the last bastion of morality it's not it's a festering turd there's so much wrong with us and i am jamaican and i love my country and there are so many good people here, but there are also so many bad people. Yeah. And the good people are enabling the bad people because they don't want us to speak about any of the problems. So they, they're scared. No, they're pride. They have this false pride. Like, it's they can't wipe the dirty linen in public. It's fair. It has to be fair. The only I don't know. Speaking up and telling the truth is fear of being looked at, is fear of being ridiculed, is fear of being, you know the minority versus the majority you know that's it, it's the it's the only thing to me is fear that would hold you back so you know so their fear supersedes their their will to do right by this child that they see getting molested like they see a big man with a little girl and them say yo them little girl let us love big man like what what that narrative is so disgusting to me. jesus christ Instead of teaching your sons not to be rapists and, and predators, 
You're going to tell your, your daughters, now 